All right, back with another microcontroller circuit, ESP32. I'm adding a button to the circuit. I have a multimeter. You see it's in the open configuration based on the dial position. If I close this, you can see that it says short circuit there. So it basically detects whether you have conductivity or not. And if I, for example, let's see if I can get them both signed to this over here. You can see that right there, there's no conductivity between those two wires. But on the button, you can see that there's conductivity this way. Similarly, there is conductivity right there, but no conductivity if I select you know, two on the same side like this, or let's say those two on the same side. It doesn't really um, you know, make conductivity unless we press the button. All right, so that's how that uh, button works. Let's connect it up to a circuit. So for the button example on this thing, we're only going to use three pins. And that would be the pin that's labeled ground, the pin that's labeled 3.3 volts, and then this one right here, which is GPIO4. So it's going to be one of our input pins, and then we're going to use this for power and ground. So using those three pins and our button over here to the right-hand side, what we're going to do is, first of all, put a um, resistor, and this is going to be typically a one kilo ohm resistor, brown, brown, black, red. That's going to be between the ground pin right there and pin four. I kind of like how it labels it like that. You can see ground is right there and pin four is right over there. This is going to be the pull-up resistor to prevent uh, you know, a short circuit, as we'll see in a moment. All right, so the next thing you want to do here is, is take a signal wire. I usually use yellow for signal wires and put it on one side of the button and have that go into the other side of pin four. So you can see I've kind of pushed this thing over to you know the far side of this breadboard. So there's the valley and you know these five wires right uh, three these three five connector uh, holes here are connected electrically and then these five, but they're not connected across the valley. So um, there we have that one connected over here. And then finally, what we want to do is put another wire. Usually I use red for that one for, for the, uh, the power. In this case, you know, if it's um, some TTL devices use five volts, but in this case it uses 3.3. And so that's going to be on the fifth one over here. And you can see that that one is labeled 3.3 volts and we're going to put this to the other side of the button and that's about it so what this is going to do is when you press this button it's going to close this circuit right here and it's going to make this uh, side of the resistor five volts and when you have the button open no current is going to flow so therefore it's going to be in ground so basically you're putting in zero volts or five volts into pin four and we want to detect what that looks like all right, so let's program this circuit uh, so that the thing will respond to the button presses. You can see my resistor. Um, actually, I'm using a 10 kilo ohm resistor, but I think it'll still work. And you can see that I have it tied to ground right there and then pin four. Well, actually it's the eighth pin over, but it's labeled GPIO4 on the circuit uh, documentation. And you can see that also in that uh, GPIO4 that's supposed to be a yellow wire. It looks a little bit white in the video. We have it going to one side of the button and then we have this five, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not five volts, but 3.3 volts over here coming out of the fifth pin over. And uh, that's where it's being supplied with power. So what we wanna do is detect when this button is pressed. So what we're gonna do is go over here to file examples, basics, and we're gonna do a digital read serial. So again, that was uh, file example, our basics and then uh, digital read serial. So we, once again, we can uh, remove the comments uh, just so we can look, take a look at the code. It says that it's really configured to use um, a button press of the GPIO2. So we're gonna modify the code and uh, put a four right there because we're gonna use four as the input rather than two. What it does then is it sets up a serial connection. That's the, uh, um, micro USB connector right there, um, it's going to send uh, a signal back to the computer and we'll see it on the screen once we press the button. And so it's constantly looping through there, reading the status of the uh, GPIO4, and it's going to display it for us on the screen. So let's 
write that very simple default program. We only made, I guess, two changes to it. One was removing the comments and the other one was just changing those two pins. And so we're gonna see that nothing's gonna happen here. Um, no light's gonna flash because we don't have that programmed. But what we, what we will see is if we go up here to tools and we go to serial monitor, um, you can see that right now it's de detecting that pin four is in the ground state. In other words, uh, zero volts. And so it's just repeating zeros over and over again. And then I'll come over here and you'll see in the video where my finger comes in and I press it, and then they all go to one. So it's really detecting what I'm doing. So a motion over here on the circuit is leading to uh, the computer realizing what it's doing, uh, what I'm doing over there. And it's all made all possible by the thing, communicating that information out through the micro USB into the USB of the computer. Now, what I might do here is pause the video and see if we can modify it so that it'll also flash that light uh, when we press the button. All right, so I do want you to make these code modifications also. What you're gonna do is go into file and examples basics, and we're going to go back to Blink, and we're going to copy some code from that routine or that uh, program over to this one over here. So again, we don't need the uh, comments after we've read them, at least for right now. And we do want to set up the built-in LED to be an output. So we want to copy that setup right there over here. So we've set up the, um, you know, the GPI-4 to be an input, but we want the LED to be an output. And that was, um, I believe, pin five that we talked about in the last video. Then what we want to do is we want to test the button state. So what we want to do is make an if then statement. So down here, we're going to say if, and you open up your parentheses and you say button state, and I guess I could just make it easy and copy and paste right there. Um, if it's equal to, and you have to use two equal signs for that, uh, I suppose we would do high. That might be one way to do it. Determine whether it's zero or one. Um, and then we also want an else. And we got to use curly brackets for these conditionals. So this curly bracket right here is actually closing off the loop. But all of this is the if then statement. So if the button state is high, in other words, if I pressed it down, let's turn the light on. So let's say that right there. Turn on the built-in LED. And um, if it's uh, the other condition off by default, the else statement, we want it to be low. All right, let's see if this is going to work. And I load up my serial monitor again. And I should see a lot of zeros coming in there. Where did the serial monitor go? Let's see here. Tools, serial monitor. I guess an easy way to see it is to click on the uh, COM8 down here at the bottom, and now you can see it. And you'll notice two things when I press the button. One of them is it goes to one over here, and the other one is the light turns on. Okay, so this is um, internal communication on the uh, ESP32 thing. And then over here on the right-hand side is uh, my computer picking up the signal from the micro USB. All right, so go ahead and get that uh, circuit completed and let me know if you need help along the way.